Shout out the staff first, everyone come in. Thank you guys for taking care of us. Shout out the players for grinding as hard as you guys have. I'm actually so proud of you guys. You did as trolls as you guys are and you stress me out. You did a good job, especially the kids. So shout out them, shout out the coaching staff, Drew, Cap, thank you guys for dealing with our shit all the time. And good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we won. Woo. I'm talking about from everyone that it feels more comfortable to play a tournament and to go to next year ready. And obviously the goal like is to come like in February super ready for anything. Our our firepower is pretty unbelievable. That's always like the, the Sentinels magic. As a team, we've definitely been improving a lot and it actually feels like very, very real. I can't, you know, say some crazy shit like I'm gonna be the best player in the world, but I can expect myself to perform better than I did last year and at a higher level. Oh, dude, Zaddy's back, bro. Like, that's the only reason they need, like, you know? People should just be excited because I think this Sen roster is competitive. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of excuses the last year and, like, a lot of shit that went on, but I can, I think, I think, I can confidently say that this roster or this Sen era should be good. Yes, thank you to all the fans for coming out, supporting us, to people at home watching. Thank you very much. It means a lot to us, and we put in the effort, so hopefully it shows off into the True Sen fans, we really appreciate it. Twenty twenty three kicked off with a bang. LCQ was over, and with fans still riding high on the internet breaking editions of the Shroud and Tarek signings, the biggest news of all time dropped. Sentinels had been selected to be in the Valorant Franchise League, but not everything would stay the same. New Blood was headed to the Sentinels Valorant roster. World Champions Sasi and Pankata were headed to Sentinels to hopefully create a winning core of the 2023 roster. If only it were that simple. I think I came to LA after Christmas, but we were not able to practice for so long. We were just doing like some strats uh, on Discord. No practice. I had no time to speak in English, by the way. I remember that we played one sp split. It was my first time playing that map on English. I didn't even know the name of the position in English. It was crazy. Our first stop was the Tarek Ludwig Invitational, a small off-season event to get some match experience for the new squad. The vibe of the team going into the Ludwig Tarek Invitational was just have fun because Brian got to the US like two days before. So we were just like on two days of practice, we were just like, okay, just go run around and kill people. And things were looking up in our first outing. We matched up versus TSM and won in a clean 2-0. They were great games, which gave Valor fans a preview of what was to come, with Tens shifting over to KO for a map and Zekin taking over entrying on Neon. After that, we ran into the guard where we played a best of one. It was an insane match on split that went to OT, but we finally fell 16 to 14. I do remember the, the atmosphere compared to like the first day to the second day was a lot different. And that's probably just like a, another result of like us not playing together for that often. So even, you know, we lost and we were sad about it and all, but it wasn't like too bad. But uh, we were definitely kind of bummed to be up so early. While it wasn't the dominant performance everyone was expecting, it was a realistic portrayal of where Sen was as a team. We had only a few days of practice going up against established rosters, and it showed. But with that reality check behind us, it was time to prepare for the real debut, the lock-in event in Brazil. Yeah, it was just scrimming all the time. Uh, we were kind of playing like catch up compared to the other teams because, you know, Pancada got to the US so late. The scrim's going amazing. <laughs> some rough ones, some good ones. But I think we're getting a lot better than we were like a month ago. We're good. We're doing good. Yeah, we were trying to to build a map pool, you know. Uh, I remember that we didn't have like enough time to do that. So we went to look in like a little bit late about the other thing. With just over a month to prepare, expectations were high. That was until we saw who we were up against. By luck of the draw, we were facing off versus Fnatic, the undisputed best team in the world. So after a month of practice, we packed our bags and headed to Brazil to face off against our toughest competition. This is what it's all about, baby. Sentinels versus Fnatic. New players, a new meta, new expectations, and this time only one of them can continue with their tournament lot. It went about as well as you'd expect. We got 2-0'd in games that weren't even close, but despite this huge 
huge bummer, we still had a great time going to Brazil. We got to meet some amazing fans and added a whole new population to Sen City. Yeah, it was insane. Actually, the Brazilian fans, they are insane. So when they see the people that they like, they really show that. So that is very nice. I remember when we walking like to this stage to play and it, there was a lot of people screaming my name. That moments are the best. That's why I guess every single player is still, still competing for that moment. With that bittersweet trip behind us, we got back to LA to get ready for the VCT season. So that being said, our first match versus 100 Thieves, feeling ready for that? The Tyson versus Cryo matchup, are you gonna diff him or what? Yes. So I just woke up. <laughs> Wait, what's going on here? Are you having a podcast? Uh, definitely felt pretty confident going in. We had a, a good amount of practice in between lock-in and the start of the season, so I felt pretty prepared. I remember on the very first round of the series, I got a 4K, and I was like, yeah, these guys blow. But they, that's the problem. Oh my gosh, if they get the kills, they're still going to have to get the defuse. He's gotten it to half. Dirksen has to swing. Oh my gosh! Whoa! What a start that would have been! In a hard-fought battle, any of the maps could have gone either way, with the final two going into OT. But at the end of the day, we came out on top. With such a great game, Hopium was at an all-time high for Sense City. But as you likely know, that Hopium would quickly turn into Copium. The next two matches were rough. A 2-0 versus NRG that saw an abysmal 13-2 Icebox game, and a 2-1 versus Leviathan that saw two really close maps, and then a 13-4 stomp on Pearl. We got fucking smoked. They understood the map more and just completely shit on us. I, I got a finger infection, and so one of my fingers just wasn't operable for a bit. <laughs> so that also was pretty shit. This is a picture of my finger yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. pretty fucked up. We changed the roles, you know, but it didn't work out as we expect to work. I had a, I had a feeling that it wasn't right. So, something was like really wrong. Regardless of even me being sick or even like anything like that, I think we would have lost still just because I think they were definitely a more well ironed out team than us at the time. After these two tough games, some news came out that shocked the Valorant community. Our head coach Psycho was no longer part of the team. This meant that Kaplan would be stepping into the role as head coach. Hey Sim City, big changes, huh? I'm your new head coach Kaplan. Let's get into what that means. And he'd have to get to work quick considering the next week was super weak. Okay, now I'm the head coach. Like, I, I have a job to do. Like, I gotta step up and grab the helm here. This ship's just gonna sink. I knew it would be pretty hard to prove my head coaching ability um, in the situation I was put in. To make matters worse, everyone's favorite player, Tens, would be out with COVID and a messed up finger. That means we had to dial up Marv and get him on a flight to Los Angeles ASAP. The first match of Super Week was versus last year's world champion, Loud. Given that we had stolen two of their players, you could say that it was personal. I was playing against the guys that I um, usually play together. I felt that we had the, the series on our hand, you know? It was supposed to be a 2-0. We were actually true so hard. Oh my God, it was so sad. But you know what happens. It was a good performance. I was like, after that game, I actually was like, okay, well, like, we still have a chance because we proved that we were playing as loud. We were, we were the best team at the time, from all my opinion. And then I was like, okay, we still, we still have hope. I think even with, with that loss, okay, it was a loss, but it still gave us hope, I think. Unfortunately, they came out on top 2-1, but we did give them a good fight. We turned our pearl around from last week, winning 13-6, and map 2 went the distance 13-11. If a few aim duels went our way, it could have been a 2-0, but we couldn't dwell on this because we had our second game just two days later versus MIBR. It may not be here though. JZC has a flash in there. Three, never mind. He gets two, he's got the ult, he gets the third! We smoked them 2-0. It wasn't even close. It'd be fair to say that after these two games, Sen City was riding high again. We changed our coach, brought in Marv, and managed to take the reigning world champs to three maps. We lost to Loud, but we lost, uh, you know, two to one with a tight OT. So we were feeling pretty good because they were the, the top dog. And then MIBR, we, we smacked them. After a successful Super Week, it was the first time I could really get my players to go, yeah, like, I believe in us, like, we got this, like, I'm excited for the rest of the season. Given this success and the fact that Tyson was still recovering amongst dealing with some personal matter, it was decided that Marv would continue to play until Tyson was ready. When Tens was out and Marv was in, um, 
he Marv took on more of like a heavy worker role. So a lot of the time on like offense, we'd be doing stuff and he'd be out on a, like on the extremity doing his own thing. And a lot of times he'd uh, come up with timings or come up with kills and we'd go back to him or he'd try and work the map on his own. He was definitely really strong in that role. Yeah, I mean, playing you guys, I mean, yeah, you guys didn't have tens. So it was kind of like, at the time, that kind of fit the roles though. Like Marv coming in, like I felt like your guys' roles were actually like kind of ironed out then. I mean, I think Pankato was still on Sentinel, I don't know. But yeah, we were actually honestly more scared to play that roster than the tens roster, just because we felt like the roles actually made more sense. It was very important for us to go to 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 playoffs, win that both met. And we lost, and we had like ha high expectations to play the match. We really thought that we were uh, good enough to win both teams. But I don't know what, what happened, and we just got destroyed by both and we lost a little bit of faith. After these two embarrassing losses, something had to change, especially considering that now our playoff chances are in other people's hands. Hey, Sun City, lots to talk about. Fuck it, I'm back. First off, our Lord and Savior Tens had fully recovered and come back to the team. The other massive change is that our RGL Def decided to step down and exit Valorant. I love Rory, like I loved working with him, but um, it, again, from like my perspective, it just sucked because I had no control over it. Like he wanted to leave and it was his decision and he, he made that decision. I basically went back from being on the bench to being the starter again, but I think that we had a kind of like a role crisis because we had many like conflicting roles. It's in everyone's best interest to just not check social media. So when Tyson was getting a ton of flack, um, I was definitely on his side, like supporting him. But um, at the same time, like I already knew that he wasn't look or like he could probably see some of it. But for the most part, he was probably just ignoring it and didn't care. You just have to not care. And a lot of people, uh, they kind of look at like surface level and they'd be like, oh, this guy like doesn't think or some, some shit like that. But like, Trust me, nobody nobody in the community other than the people that I play with know me as a player and like what I kind of like bring to a team. So I think that a lot of people just like look at me and I'm just like fucking holding my W key and shooting, but uh, there's a lot more depth to the game than that. And then we're like, okay, who's gonna IGL? I was like, bro, I, English is not my first language. And <laughs> I was like, fuck, I can't IGL, but like, oh shit, I, I'm gonna IGL in English. Like, it's, it's pretty hard for me. And then Jimmy came and was like, oh, I can IGL. I was like, okay, that's fine. With a new IGL and our star back home, we had two games left and a precarious grip on playoffs. Thankfully for Marv, we had a warm up game versus Crew. Uh, they hadn't won a game yet, so my mindset was like, if we lose to this team, I'm just gonna stay in school. I was, th I was kind of thinking like that going into it. I was uh, mostly excited to get like good duelist reps in against a team that I could play super confident against, like no disrespect to them, but they, they hadn't won a game. So I was like, I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna just fight, I'm gonna fight, I'm gonna fight, get all the you know good reps in that I can. Both maps went the distance, but at the end of the day, we got the dub and some important experience on a fresh IGL. Red Bull Clutch is set to stay alive. The next match was versus Furia and it was crazy. Furia was kind of in the same boat of us. They had to like win or beat us like a certain amount. Uh, it was funny because we go into the third map and the ideology was like Kaplan just went on the mic. He said, guys, let's just, let's not stress out about like the last game. Like even if we didn't make it to playoffs, let's take away their chances to make playoffs. So <laughs> it's like taking them down with us. I don't even know if we actually can kill their chance of playoffs. <laughs> I just wanted something to motivate the guys and I thought, I knew that might have been a possibility and usually I pay more attention to that stuff than them. So uh, they trusted me and the whole the whole game, they were like, yeah, let's kill their chances. And I'm like, okay, maybe. <laughs> well, it worked. We just need to win and pray for someone lose. <laughs> we take map one handedly. They get map two in similar fashion. Map three is an insane back and forth battle that sees 36 rounds played. After 12 rounds of overtime, we came out on top. It's finished, it's done. And Sentinels granted their chance. All that was left to do was wait and see how the rest of the league played out and if we would make it into playoffs. We were depending on the other results to go to playoffs. But when you face those kind of situations, like 
you can't overthink about it because it, it's it's all out of your control so you can't do shit about it you can just focus on yourself so i honestly didn't care it was like i told the guys like bro just play the game we need i think we needed like to two zero for you to have we had a higher chance to go to playoffs we did that and we did it to two one i remember like when we lost the it was on zero we lost in the, uh, the second game we could, we go back to talk and it was like bro just chill don't give a fuck just I just want to win this game, no matter what happened, no matter the results, because we put ourselves in this situation, so that's it. So we missed out on yet another international LAN. This time it was extra painful since it was in Tokyo and you know all the weebs we have on the team were dying to go, especially this guy. So that means we were LCQ bound for our last chance to make it to champs. It was somehow poetic that our first match of LCQ would be versus 100 Thieves. I mean, it's 100 Thieves. I don't think we like ever lose against 100 Thieves. I only remember losing like one time. We were well practiced. And you know, the first time we played them, I wasn't on Duelist. But now that I was on Duelist, I was like, I want to I wanna play them again. I want to see what happens. It was like history was repeating itself. 100 Thieves takes map one, but just barely in OT. After that, we crushed them in back-to-back -back games. With 100 Thieves out of the way, we then ran into Cloud9, who was knocked into the LCQ after bombing out of the playoffs. While Cloud9 wasn't looking as dominant as they did in the regular season, they were still good enough to take us down 2-1, sending us to the lower bracket. We then had to take on La Vietan. I wish I could say it was a good match, but goddamn, we got fucked up. It was a quick 2-0 where we only got 12 rounds across both maps. And with that, our dream of making champs died. I do remember getting shit on, and I, I think we just got like fully diffed as a team. We practiced, okay, but the other teams were better. That's it. I mean, from a team perspective, we definitely like dif disappointed. Like, there's no easy way to put it. From uh, an individual perspective, I was really happy with how the year went for uh, for me. I thought I got a lot better, like just as the season progressed. And when the regular season ended, I graduated, and then I finally had like a lot of free time to just play more and more. So. When I was playing a ton going into LCQ, I felt really confident in my individual form. And even after LCQ, I was like, I'm playing well, I'm going to continue to play well, I'm excited for the future. This would be the second year in a row where Sen missed out on champs. Well, at least from a playing point of view. We still had a pretty massive presence at champs with Tarek and Tenz co-streaming the event live from the arena. And we got this guy over here, the goal. So, there we go. So now that we were in the off season, it was time for the guys to catch their breath before getting back to the grind. So we took a month off after LCQ and we spent a lot of time deliberating and thinking about what to do. And the decision ended up being, okay, we're gonna keep this four, but find an IGL. The first major change to happen was Marv's contract expiring, leaving us with a hole in the roster to fill. We knew we needed a dedicated IGL who could harness the raw firepower the team had in spades. So we went about trying out everyone we could find. Reddit went crazy with speculation as the scrim results got leaked. Who was this mystery IGL who got Sentinels to dunk on the champs teams? It was finally revealed that John QT had left M80 and joined his longtime friend and former teammate Kaplan on Sen. You know, I'm fully confident in how hardworking he is and how I'm going to work with him. As a coach, that was really nice. It let me focus on a lot of other things going into the offseason, knowing I have an idea I can trust. Well, he's not really that good, so it's like... <laughs> John just, uh, he meshes with the team really well. He's a very calm caller, so, um, you know, like, people like me, like Tyson Jordan even, we get pretty like hyped up, get very loud during the games. But um, John's always, he's kind of like a calming presence. Like he can just chill everyone out and just make a good call. I mean, every team he was on, they were always kind of like the underdogs and he always like brought his teams like far, so far as like a leader. And I mean, like you kind of have to be good to, to do that. Like you can't like fraud your way into that. It was like, okay, this guy's good. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, I, I felt like comfortable around him and with his calls. So it was, uh, and especially like Cap knew him, he knew how John works, so they fit well together. One of the first things he says, like, it may be unbelievable, but my name isn't John. <laughs> I think it was a good start. I th in my opinion, it was like, not as efficient as I would like it to be because of the screen quality, some random stuff would happen and we couldn't practice, stuff like that. But it was like, we still had like a head start because we were the only franchise team that was practicing. So it was so good. But we weren't done. We still had that six-man spot to fill. So we called up our good friend Zelsis and brought him along for the ride. As a sub. As a sub. As a sub, of course. 
He brings a lot of like emotional leadership. He's uh, definitely like the hype guy of the roster. Like if our energy's down, he can bring it up just like at the snap of a finger. We don't really argue as a team and we kind of like just chill, but I think it's definitely really good to have someone on the team play doubles advocate and like make sure that we are actually like playing our best and like actually talking about certain stuff that do matter instead of just like saying yes and like brushing it off. So I think that's really, really good about Jordan. He's very like social, very confrontational. They weren't trying to get me to come to send. They were just like, oh, we love you anyway. And like, we just want you to have like the best offer you had and stuff like that. And I was like, so then I was like, okay, I, I like, I have to come to set. Like no matter what, even if I don't start, I have to come to set. With a revamped roster and a seemingly endless off season, we decided to give the Valorant community something to talk about. We scheduled a series of show matches to let the world know what we've been cooking. First up, we played our buddy Ludwig's team, Moist X Shopify. With a whole series of gimmicks and prop bets to keep it interesting, the event started off great. We took map one in an insane 13-2, but that's where the fun ends. We then ate shit on a sense and hate even losing our CEO, Rob, four grand. Oh my yeah! God! The Brontagon! One versus three! It's MX this season! You can't end this way! After that wake-up call, we had another show match, this time versus our rivals on G2. And then Cap called me and was like, oh, oh, I came in and then it was like, oh, you need to play today because Pencata got COVID or whatever. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'll play. It just ended up being, all right, you're gonna play the G2 show match and then you're just filling. I'm, I'm the sixth man, you know, I'm filling. If someone gets sick or I need to sub in, I'm subbing in. We dominated the first two maps, but thanks to some stupid gimmicks, we lost map three. After these two show matches, then came the real event, the Sentinels Invitational. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are live here, baby, in the Sentinels office for the first ever tournament being held here. We invited three teams to our office, Moist X Shopify, G2, and our old friend Dapper's team, Oxygen, to play in a three-day event. We converted our office into a broadcast studio, had fans come to watch the games, and put on an amazing show that rivaled some BCT broadcasts. After seeing all the work the Send staff put in, the guys knew they needed to do their part. And did they ever. Ooh, um, <laughs> oh! Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. We managed to win the whole event, only dropping two maps total. The best part was everyone on the team got a chance to play, and our six man ended up being the MVP. I think the Sentinels Invitational was a tournament that was really special and good for us because we needed that. You know, like we need to build consistency. So the tournament is perfect for that. The roles were kind of uh, flowing, and we kind of showcased that, like, we could play with like me, Tens, and then like me, Pencott. Like, you know, we kind of like showed that a little bit. So it's like, don't worry guys, send fan base. Even if someone gets sick, like we're chilling. Um, but no, it was good. It was fun. We, uh, we had good showings. We obviously, that was like my first tournament on Smokes full time. Um, and then a little bit scrims here and there before that, but it wasn't like much time with the guys. Felt really good to win. Um, it was the first time for me that like, I felt like I, personally played really well in a tournament, especially in the games that like mattered the most. I felt really confident in myself. I felt like I was playing really good. So it was definitely like a big win for me in terms of like, I can feel like dominant when I'm playing. I can feel like I'm really one of the best in the server. Like in, during that tournament, I felt super, super confident. So it felt really good to win it. After winning our own tournament, we had one show match left. This one was a fun one. A way of saying thank you to our good friend Tarek for hosting our tournament for three non-stop long days. We got Tarek to put together a team, including our own Pankata, to test his skills versus Sen. It wasn't a super serious game considering Tarek was playing with a pug team and we were playing three maps that have been pulled out of the competitive pool. That said, it was still a lot of fun. We got to see Tens on ISO, Shazam playing again, Coach Kaplan dunking on world champion Bustio. It was just a lot of fun and one more thing for the Valorant community to talk about. I think we found out on the last day of the Sentinels Invitational that we were going to play a show match against a ragtag like Tarek team. I think he's good. He can he can shoot bodies. <laughs> I saw the headshot percentage. <laughs> After that, we had the last event of the year, the Afrika TV Valorant League. The guys packed up their bags and got on a plane to Korea, but not before launching our new energy drink, Hopium. I mean, super happy to go, obviously. Never been there. I've always wanted to go there. Uh, they're like some great teams, probably the most stacked offseason tournament. 
I'm feeling confident going into the tournament. Um, there's definitely some some great teams there, but I think that we're playing at a at a high level right now, and I think we have you know we have a pretty good shot at, at winning it. It was cold in Seoul, but the hopium was keeping us warm. Things were looking scary considering we were in the group of death, alongside monsters like DRX and PaperX. The opening game of the event was Sen versus World Championship runners-up Paper Rex. It was a back-and-forth game, but we managed to eke out the win in OT of Map 3. After that, we had to take on the hometown heroes in DRX. We blew past them 2-0. With these two massive wins under our belt, the hopium started to flow. We had to win just two more games to get our second trophy of the year. The first obstacle was the newly revamped Team Liquid. It was another back and forth series, but again, we managed to take it in the third map. Now, the finals. We had to take on Paper X once again, this time in a best of five. Would the boys be able to keep this momentum or had Paper X studied our games and come up with some crazy comp to take us down? As if, we smashed them 3-0 and became the first Afrika TV Valorant League champions, closing out our year with a huge win. And with that, our competitive year came to a close. With just a few weeks left before 2024, the boys decided to take a little vacation, see their families, and get some much needed and earned rest. They'll be back in Los Angeles grinding away, looking to bring home some more trophies for Sun City. People should just be excited because I think this Sen roster is competitive. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of excuses the last year and like a lot of shit that went on, but I can, I think, I think I can confidently say that this roster or this Sen era should be good. Our, our firepower is pretty unbelievable. So even if we're in like a really bad spot that we can like lose around, I think that with the, the players we have, we can definitely just randomly like win around. We're not supposed to. That's always like the, the Sentinels magic where everything will be like against us and then randomly we'll just like pull out a miracle win. So uh, I think that's, I think that will be really fun to watch. I think everyone will be excited for our team because we actually had time to practice and we were actually like working really hard, really hard and people know that. And even with the change, that I hope that we don't change anymore. <laughs> uh, we are actually able to be consistent around it, so it feels more comfortable to play a tournament and to go to next year ready for it. I just want to have a map pool, and I think we got this time. So yeah, I think we'll be ready for next year. Yeah, obviously next year is like qualifying to every LAN, winning them, obviously winning the regular season. Uh, I don't think there's any other options, to be honest and we are working for it. That's what we've started like since September, way earlier than any teams, and we've been practicing since. And obviously the goal like is to come like in February, super ready for anything. And yeah, I mean, obviously it's gonna be a bit bumpy, but that's just how it goes. We're gonna have highs, we're gonna have lows, but the goal is still the same, and hopefully we'll, we'll do great and make the fans proud.